Good day, folks. I'd like to clarify a few things of what Don Smith does in relative to reactive power in his setup. And basically, I'd like to explain why so many people probably fail here and why. So basically, I try to draw this as best as I can here. So I'm going to go through it with you what happens here. So let's say we have our AC generator. It's our very own, very small, 110 volt, 100 MA for this example. So what you get here is the line out, which is real power, which is 100 MA plus whatever apparent power in S may be back on the line, which I'll get into in a moment. So essentially, if we t use a typical power factor 0 0.95, this amounts to about 10.4 watts on the output here. So then we have our load, which is 110 volts at 100 MAs. So essentially in Don Smith and similar setups, we're, we're aiming for a high QLC at high resonance here. So we're aiming for very high VAR power. So just fictionally speaking, what's important here is having a high VAR. And you can do that with resonance with a resonant coil. So let's say here it's 3000 VAR here. So um, so let's say 3000 VAR here. So basically to get our amps, we divide that by our voltage. So this is 27.227 amps or the equivalent of 2.84 kilowatts. So you're going, wow, that's a lot of reactive power. That's why a lot of people want to tap into it, folks. But there are usually major hurdles. People want to try and things like tap a rectifier off of here and try and get that. But you people soon notice if they put anything, even like, even a diode here, let's say, and they tap into this, all of a sudden, because this is a very finely tuned resonance system, whatever you do, whatever you touch here, whew, these VARs basically drop, and what you end up with is your regular power, uh, your regular power here, your real power, which is 100 MA, because this system, because it's reactive, can only displace it from one part to another due to its efficiency constraints within its parameters. So whatever values you have, the maximum it will be able to handle is basically 100 MA if it can do that. So essentially what you're getting at is basically normal kind of power transfer, but semi-isolated through the capacitor. That's all you're getting, and maybe a little bit of a power factor correction. But essentially, anything you do to touch here, like running traditional capacitive loads, you basically reduce this to almost zero, and essentially, you're just taking advantage of the efficiencies of the system. So in other words, you're not getting more out of the output, maybe even a little less. But what does happen is you still get a certain bounce back into the grid here that goes because it's reactive. There's a ping pong. Now, in theory, if there'd be no losses, whatever you're putting in would equally go back out. But there's always a bit of losses. But needless to say, the apparent power is what comes out on the line. So the line has to accommodate for real power plus the apparent power. Now, in very linear mains AC systems, what we have is perfectly symmetrical systems with symmetrical transformers. Everything is symmetrical with the line. So they can calculate this. So they know that they have to basically have double deficiency because then in a symmetrical system, if they have some sort of capacitive power supply, the maximum in theory, it would be able to bounce back is as much as you're putting into it. So that's why the mains has to accommodate for at least two times what it's putting in for that scenario. Now, essentially, what happened here, there are some distinct differences. When you have a high Q system, that's when it's mostly inductive, that's good for triggering these high reactive, um, strong local field interactions like Don Smith does with his coils and stuff, okay? Now, a, a high Q in the negative range means that the system is mostly capacitive. This would be most capacitive power supplies that consumer base runs in the mains. For this is good essentially for power factor correction. It gives you a little bit more efficiency on running your load. But essentially, bottom line is both systems, whether it's positive or negative, Q will reflect power back as apparent power S into the grid or the generator's input essentially. That's just the nature 
of um, reactive systems and the generation or the plant needs to accommodate for that possible apparent power without blowing anything up now. So essentially when we do things like let's say we have an LC circuit here but this is not what you normally just need. Usually they just have a capacitor so it's very so what I'm getting at is if it were just a capacitor here, this is where it could only bounce back what you put into it. And then whatever through displacement, the power factor is what you get in your output. So what happens is when we add a coil here, we get resonance, we tune it at a high resonance point. So this is where we bring up our VARs. As long as you don't touch it, don't, put, don't try and connect anything with it. Let it do its thing, right? Okay, so essentially, here's what, what one person can do if you own the whole system to take advantage of this now. So essentially, people found out that the reactive gains, as soon as you try and tap into it, it goes right down and you just end up with, you never get more output from this than what is being put in, obviously. But you can get near the same with the power factor correction is what I'm getting at. So in a very efficient power supply here. So essentially here, what will happen is the line is going to have that apparent power. Now what you can do here is if one were to put, let's say, a capacitor here. So now, I, so now as I was saying, it's best when you have a high QLC circuit at resonance and you know you've built up a high VAR with very little input trigger, leave it alone. Don't try to run anything on this. Just leave it do its natural thing. So what's going to happen here is because it's high, it's going to reflect a lot back into the grid here. So what happens is, like I was saying, you put a capacitor here and then on the capacitor, output here, you feed that into a full bridge rectifier. And then the output of this goes into a charging battery bank, plus and minus, let's say 12 volts. Okay, so now what happens here, we're able to leave the high Q reactive at resonance, leaving alone on the load, let the natural dynamics of reactive power do its thing and come back and backwards as a parent power in the load. And the capacitor here, what it's going to do is it basically syncs with the, um, or aligns with the regular AC. So it'll happily cross over and power your normal load at 100 MA. But through the displacement currents, what happens is when you have high reactive um, bursts of energy, that's going to create a difference here at the capacitor. And this is what the rectifier here is going to primary capture and convert that at your high, in theory, kilowatts into the battery here, depending on, I use a super high value just to show the idea of how you can get a high Q with very little input. So essentially what you have here is you then put your inverter, regular inverter here, and then you run your vending machine off of it, and then you run your generator, your oscillator, whatever, on there. So the two outputs from your inverter, and then you essentially have a self-looping setup here and you're taking advantage of high Q resonance and we're leaving the load alone, we're not touching it, we're building up a... So in a regular AC, they wouldn't like this at all, but they're quickly correcting that, folks. There's something now called an asynchronous condenser generator and the generation companies are quickly adapting to this technology in quiet because what it does is it has the ability to do just this whatever apparent power is going back into the generator, it actually converts it back into mechanical work, making their inputs more efficient, essentially, at the generator. So what I'm getting at is if someone were to even mistakenly or purposely create a high Q condition on the line, they can actually amplify it and use it 
back and, and convert it out as real power that they actually build people for. But you know what I'm getting at? Not only do they, they recycle it, but if there's a high Q gain here, they could actually amplify it through their asynchronous condenser generators. So that's very interesting. So essentially someone could do that too if they can buy their own, if they don't want to go this direction. So what does this mean? To simplify things, you don't need any of these advanced plasma tubes, dynamics or anything. Just a high Q LC, like very similar to a Tesla coil, doing its thing, letting it reflect all that apparent power back into the grid on its own. And what you have to do is you have to collect the additional energy back at the input. This is what I tried to show the other day in another video where I had two lamps running at the input's ground without stressing what was going on over here at the output. So I was trying to get to make the links, but I guess some it's, it's difficult sometimes in, in my own words. So I was hoping that going down into the details would explain to people and better understand what Don Smith was doing in his later years with the highly simplified device. So essentially, this all adds up. If the key here is breaking the linear nature by having a very high reactive, the coil here will give you resonance, which will give you a very high VAR. The capacitor on itself on the line won't allow you to give a higher voltage buildup. It will only give you a better power factor to your load. So that's why you need a clever balance of both to get exactly the effect you want. So again, I hope this answers some questions. And I'm always looking forward to your interaction, folks, and have yourselves all a great day. Thank you.